Recently, I came to know about a new story about a person that I honored and looked up to. I won't be naming the person and won't be quoting any news excerpts. As everyone else, I'm waiting for more details. Today, I want to talk about what happens when our heroes fall. Let me share what went through my mind when I heard the news. I was heartbroken. I couldn't accept the fact that this person could have done it. Even now, I really don't believe everything that has come out. At the same time, I reason that no man is exempt from being vulnerable. There can be time in everyone's life that we might get caught off guard. Or if we have not put proper measures in place to safeguard us, we might fall. One of the things that I've learned over the years is to guard my heart when I hear stories and not to condemn anyone. The way I take it is this, what if I was in their situation? What would I want? Stones or grace? There is a story in the Bible about a woman who was caught in adultery. It goes into the details that she was caught in the very act. She is then dragged into the presence of Jesus where they wanted him to pronounce judgment of death upon her. That was the law of the time and the mob wanted to execute it. Yet Jesus, full of love and mercy, protects her from the rabid crowd. That is the power of love. They give another chance. Did she know the law? I bet she would have. Did Jesus know that she had broken the law? Absolutely. Yet grace and mercy prevailed over death and damnation. Jesus is the only place of rescue that we can run into when we fail or for anyone who has failed in their life. What he offers, none can. On that day that woman found the value of mercy and grace that the mob was blinded to. Even today the mob wants to take the law to its hand. When we hear about moral failures, do we point our fingers or do we extend our hands that would enable people to thrive? As a disciple of Christ, when I see my brother fail, it is not just his failure, it's mine too. When I see my brother fail, I need to raise him up and restore him. See, I won't be getting into what the church as an organization should do when they see moral failures in leadership. I would leave that to the church to take that decision. I believe with the help of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the scripture and the law of the land, they can come to the best decision. Yet when it comes to individuals, they are my brothers and sisters. If I would need mercy as a sinner, how much more do I need to offer that to my brother? Each one responds to situations in different ways. Joseph ran, but David stood. We do not know what conspires at that time. When one becomes strong, the other can be weak. Yet David was called the man after God's own heart. See, I'm not trying to justify the perpetrator in any way. I believe more than the fallen brother or the person, the victim is of greater significance. Since they are the ones who have been hurt, they need to be protected. They need more prayers and support. At the same time, if the one who has fallen is repentant and wants to turn around, We have to give an opportunity for that person to turn around and pursue what God has for that person. I believe God gives us that opportunity every day. He gives us an opportunity to walk away from our fallen nature. On the other hand, if the person is unwilling to recognize the sinful nature and continues in it, All that we can do is to give that person to God and pray that that person's eyes would be opened. I believe grace and mercy can triumph over every sin. It can change any person. It can transform the worst sinner 
all that we have to do is to give an opportunity for them to turn around and not write them off next time when you come across a person like that i would encourage you to understand that this person has a call of god upon his life or her life and with my help this person can reach their destiny god bless you thank you so much for hearing